Hi everyone, today I decided I would sit down and talk a little bit about Traveler's Notebook and how the system works. I think this will be a two-part video. So first we're gonna talk about just the basics of Traveler's Notebooks. This has been a highly requested video. So I'll go over kind of the differences and the accessories that you might need to set one up. And then the second part of the video I'm actually going to be um, giving my current setup a little bit of a refresh with some new papers, so I decided why not film that as well. So if you are new to Traveler's Notebooks, let's jump in to the basics. So all Traveler's Notebooks basically have the same few components. Usually they're made out of leather and then they have either an elastic or a clasp closure, such as this one. There are some that are made out of like canvas or fabric, and those are called faux dories. Um, but obviously, as you can see, leather is my preferred material. You open it up. Some of them have pockets, some of them don't. Some of them have pin loops, some of them don't. And then you have either two, four, or six um, elastics, and this is what holds the inserts in to your notebook. They do come in several different sizes. So here I have a pocket size. I also have an A6 size. It's a little bit bigger, bumping up to B6. And there is a passport size, which is smaller than the pocket. And then there's even a nano, which is super tiny. And then if we go up the other way, so after the B6, we have a standard size traveler's notebook, also called a narrow. Depending on where you purchase them from, they'll have different names for their sizes. This one's from Foxy Fix, which is no longer open, and they um, numbered their notebook. So this was a number six on their website. And then you have even a size up from the narrow, um, which is called a wide. And then you can have like an A5 size. So lots of different sizes, but the gist is the same on all of them. Um, it just depends on what size inserts you want to put inside. So for example, if you purchase a pocket size traveler's notebook, when you go to purchase inserts, obviously you're gonna want pocket size inserts to go in your pocket size notebook. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the differences you'll find between notebooks. I'm gonna move my inserts to the side. We'll talk about those later. And the jump bands and the dashboards. Okay, let's look at these three. So the first thing I'll say is that some notebooks have what's called a reinforced spine. Um, almost all of the Foxy Fix notebooks that I purchased have a reinforced spine, and that's just this leather that's sewn over the spine, um, giving it an extra layer of leather here. And what that does is it forces the notebook to lay kind of square. This notebook from the Chic Sparrow, most of them do not have reinforced spines, and you'll see when I open this up here, there's no extra piece of leather here. So that allows the leather to wrap around the inserts kind of in a um, bended way, unless you really <clears throat> train and force the notebook to have a square spine. So um, you might look at that when you're out browsing different notebooks, if you have a preference on um, a non-reinforced spine or a reinforced spine, it might be an add-on that you can add to some notebook shops. And again, I'm not familiar with every single shop on the market today. Um, I will talk about a few that I highly recommend, um, but that is one of the differences. Reinforced spine, kind of a square look, non-reinforced spine. Now, some of the old Foxy Fixes have a big back pocket, which is another option. This is really nice if you wanna put papers in the back. And if you are using a narrow or standard size notebook, the pocket 
and the back is large enough that you can fold a letter size piece of paper in half and put it in here, which is one of the reasons that the narrow size is my favorite um, size to use. Now, this one from Foxy Fix, you can see, does have a reinforced spine inside of the pocket, which causes, again, the spine to be more square. So that's the first thing. So we've talked about sizing and reinforce, reinforced spines versus non-reinforced spines. Let's take a look at the number of elastics that you can have inside your notebook. This one is what's called a single strap. It has a single piece of elastic. And really, this one's longer because of how the holes are punched. And this one I wouldn't use because it's shorter. So if I put inserts into this notebook, you know, you can have just one. So here's an insert that I have. We'll put that in and it's really just a nice little cover for maybe one insert. Now you can add more using jump bands, which I'll show you next. So we have two inserts here that I want to put in the notebook, but I only have one elastic. You can purchase what's called jump bands. And um, th these I like because they don't have a knot here. These are just elastic that are held together with a metal clip. I will link these for you below. They are from Amazon. This is for a smaller size, obviously, like this A6 or pocket that you can put around your inserts or dashboards. Um, but for this purpose, I'll use a larger one since I'm using a narrow size notebook. So you have a couple of options for getting two inserts on one elastic. You can do what's called piggybacking, which I have never done before. I think it would drive me absolutely insane, but I will show you. You take one insert, put another insert inside, and then obviously they don't line up on the edge. And then you can open up to the center and put that on one elastic. So the first half of this insert is at the front. You have your next insert in the middle and then the second half of your insert in the back. That's called piggybacking. Some people really enjoy doing that. Um, I've done that maybe with just an insert like this where it's just one sheet of paper, like a tracker I'm putting around my dailies. Um, but for anything that has lots of pages like this, I don't like the piggybacking because, um, again, it doesn't line up on the edge. So your other option then would be to use what's called a jump band. So you can take a rubber band, I've even used just rubber bands, or elastic, and put it around the first one, and then put it around the middle of your second one and you have this situation, and now this can go on your elastic. And that's how I use um, jump bands in my setup to get more inserts in, and then of course they line up evenly, okay? Now, you can always put three inserts on one elastic. So you can see here if I use the jump band and I have my two, you still have that elastic open in the middle, where you could add a third insert of choice. So this is three inserts now on the one elastic, and that's kind of one way you can, you know, add more inserts to a single strap, but you can also do this with the other notebooks that I'll show you here in a minute that have more than one elastic in the middle. So that's jump banding and piggybacking. Let me take these out again. And we'll take a look at some other options. So this is called the single strap, a single strand in the middle. You can also, which is the most common that I found, have four strands in the middle. So you'll see the two loops on the outside of the spine. And when you open up the notebook, 
you will have four elastics. So that is how my current setup is. And using that same jump band method that I showed you on the single strap, you could add three inserts to this strand, three inserts to this strand, three on this one, and three on this one. So you could have 12 inserts in this notebook very easily. Here's what it looks like in my current setup. Let me see if I have... So inside this dashboard, which we'll talk about here in a minute, you can see I have my two inserts jump banded together on my first elastic. There are some notebooks on the market where you can pay extra or they just come this way where you will have six strands in the middle. So you'll see six elastics. If you are a old Foxy Fix user or if you buy anything on the buy sell trade, Foxy Fix called this a wide. That simply means that they're the spine is wider and you have more elastics. So again, you can put even more inserts in here, three on each of those six strands. And they do typically cut the notebook just a little bit wider. So you can see here on these three, um, these are all size narrow, but as you put more inserts in, you're gonna need more room on the edge of the leather to hold them. So the single strap is the most narrow, the chic sparrow is a little bit wider, and then this wide from Foxy Fix that has six elastics is even wider than that. So the more inserts you have, the wider you're gonna need your um, notebook to be, or you will get your inserts kind of hanging out the edge and nobody wants that, right? So that's the strands in the middle. Um, depending on how many inserts you want to hold, obviously will probably influence how many um, elastics you want in your notebook. So as you're purchasing, I would just make note of that. Again, this four strand is the most typical common on the market that I found. Let's also just talk about pocket configurations while we're here. So. Um, there are tons of different interior layouts on the market. Again, some don't even have any pockets. It's just a piece of leather. This was like a secretarial pocket from Foxy Fix. This is from the Chic Sparrow and they call this Cascade Pockets. This is the inside of a Moterm and it even has a zipper, a secretarial and card slots. So just, um, I guess, maybe consider that as well when you're purchasing a notebook. If you don't like to do a lot of decoration, you might go with something more basic or none at all. If you're using your notebook as a wallet, you might wanna consider something with card slots. So we have lots of different options um, on the market today, okay? So the other thing is some, and some notebooks come with no pin loop. Some of them come with pin loops stitched on. So again, that's a personal preference. And then some of them have an elastic closure and some of them have a clasp. These ones from Moterm have two poppers. So depending on how many inserts you have in, you can make that tighter or looser. And then let's move on in to inserts and talk about those and the basics. So I would say right now for notebooks at least, most of mine come currently from the Chic Sparrow. I love the Foxy Fix, but they are currently closed. They closed the pandemic. So if I purchase any Foxy Fix notebooks, they are always off the buy sell trade on Facebook. The Chic Sparrow, which is the maker of this notebook is still open and they have very high quality leather products. And then currently my very favorite is the new Veg Tan line from Moterm. It's kind of nice to have the popper. I go back and forth on which kind of notebooks I like. It's kind of a mood thing for me, but the Mo Moterm Veg Tan planners are like $80 and they have really nice interiors. Um, 
and I think just a great deal for your money. Um, I also have like a Giglio and Vanderspeck, but those are getting up there in cost. So if you're getting started, I would say maybe check out the Chic Sparrow or Moterm once you kind of figure out a size that you like. Um, for example, I went through a little spout with this A6 size. I only have maybe two notebooks in this size and I quickly found it's too small for me. So I'm glad I didn't invest in like a Vanderspeck in this size. Um, but now that I know that I really prefer a narrow, I've been in this size for years. Um, you know, I do have a couple of higher end notebooks as well. So again, getting started, check out the Chic Sparrow or Moterm. And I think that would be a good place to try your first notebook. All right, let's move in to inserts. So you can either print your own inserts. My very favorite place to purchase printed inserts from, or you print them at home, so I guess they're digital inserts, is from Crefective Paper. That's where this tracker is from. I print them at home on my home printer and cut them myself, which is a whole another video. Or you can purchase inserts that are already made. And um, the difference would be obviously on this one, there's no binding of any type. I just folded the inserts in half. On the ones that you purchase, they're already bound for you either with staples or with some sort of sewing down the spine. Um, I haven't found a lot of shops where you can just buy physical product like this that's shipped to you. This is from Amazon. And then I, the biggest maker of printed inserts on the market is the Traveler's Company. That's where this insert is from. And you can find them on Amazon or Jet Pins. And again, this is already bound for you so the pages aren't loose. I honestly wish there would be more companies that would do the physical product, but again, that's a whole nother up cost for the business as you have to have binding machines and cutting machines and all of that. So digital is really nice because if you mess up, you can just um, take that insert out, print a new one and start again. Whereas if, you know, I feel like if I mess up in a physical product, really the only thing I can do is turn the page and try again. Um, it's in there to be in there. So um, you can buy staplers to staple these. I don't because as soon as you put it on your elastic or jump band, even though it doesn't have a binding, it's gonna stay in place, okay? So some people bind them, I prefer not to. That's just an extra step that's not needed in my opinion. So if you're getting started, I would say check out the digital site from Crefective Paper and watch your sizing. So you'll wanna pick the size insert that goes with your notebook, again, narrow size, for a narrow notebook and check out the Traveler's Company or Jet Pens for physical product. All right, we talked about inserts and I've already showed you how to jump band. Let's talk about the fun part for me, which is the accessories. So there are dashboards out on the market. They're just plastic sleeves that kind of protect your inserts. But the fun part is you can put decorative paper or stickers in here or use them functionally. So if you need to slip in a receipt or carry some extra checks with you, you can do that as well. And these simply wrap around your notebook, just like this. So again, these are Fox. This one is a Foxy Fix brand, which is no longer on the market and I've been hard pressed to find them on the buy sell trade. So I have since moved over to the Chic Sparrow and all of the dashboards um, in my current setup here are from the Chic Sparrow and they come in the sizes for the notebooks. So if you're using a pocket size, you'll wanna use pocket size dashboards and so forth. So this one obviously is an arrow. So we've talked about inserts, jump banding, elastics, 
feel like I'm trying to cover everything, but if you have questions that I don't cover, just let me know. And then let's look at the current setup and see if there's anything extra I wanna mention. Obviously you can put functional items in your pockets, um, like post-its that come in handy, or you could do more decoration. I've talked about the dashboards. Um, I guess the other thing I would recommend is sitting down and deciding what you need in your planner. And I say that because, um, you know, you wanna consider what you're gonna be using your planner for. So for me, I definitely need a monthly. These are from Crefective Paper. I definitely want a weekly, again, from Crefective Paper. I also use a tracker and a daily. And then for all those random notes and lists, I use a lined notebook. And I do wanna talk about this for a minute. So if you are coming from like a ring bound planner, you know it's very easy to just take a piece of paper or a note, punch it and put it in your planner. That's kind of hard to do in a traveler's notebook. That's why I utilize a lined notebook. So this has everything from passwords to sorority information. Anything that I'm gonna reference long-term will go into this notebook. And then once I have it filled up, I will replace it and rewrite some of that information if I need to. The other thing you can do is if it's temporary, like here I'm tracking some fundraiser dinners for my sorority, I'm not gonna need that in like three months, so I didn't wanna commit to putting it in my line notebook. Um, I just used a post-it note and then at the end of the week when I'm done with this, I can take it out and throw it away. So sit down, make a list of what type of inserts you want. Are you a weekly planner or a daily planner? Do you need a month of you? Write all of those things down and then see where you can find those inserts. Etsy is a great site. Um, again, my favorite is Crefective Paper, which is a standalone site. So you can just go over there and type in daily insert and all the daily inserts will come up, for example. All right, I think that's gonna wrap up the first part of this video where we talk about just the basics of Traveler's Notebooks. I will say after using a ring bound system for years and years, um, this felt a little odd to me at first, but now I literally can't even consider going back to rings mainly because of the ring mechanism in the middle. It's so difficult to write next to that ring for me. And I'm not always sitting at a desk where I can take the insert out and write on it separately. And having this where it's just nice and flat for your hand to write was a game changer for me. So that's what really made me move over to a traveler's notebook. And the fact that at the end of an insert for example, when this weekly insert is done here at the end of first quarter, I have a book of inserts instead of a bunch of loose pages. So those were probably the two main reasons I wanted to switch to a traveler's notebook system. I love them and I would highly encourage everyone to at least give them a try. So basics are done. Let's go ahead and do a little refresh of this notebook. So right now I have like an orange theme going. I just used random um, papers and journaling cards that I had in my stash. And I decided it would be time to give this a little bit of an update. So I'll show you that process next. So for decorations, I feel like you kind of have a couple of options. This one is just a hodgepodge of things that I've saved over the years. You can go to Michael's, um, Hobby Lobby, get scrapbooking paper, um, scour the internet and find little journaling cards, <clears throat> which is kind of fun all, all in its own. So if you have a theme that you want, you can kind of piecemeal it together like that. For today's video, I am gonna be using papers from the Coco Daisy. And Coco Daisy is a monthly um, K 
kit. So if you want to change this out, like your decorations every single month, that is a great company to do that with. Um, but they do have a couple of standalone kits, which are not subscriptions. And this is one of them, the coffee kit. So I have the papers and like a little card and a piece of vellum and acetate from um, that standalone kit. So everything is going to coordinate. And then what I do is I just go through and take out the papers in my current dashboards. my Pokemon cards. Those are from my son. They're always in there. And then I think I might leave this one in here because I only have enough paper, I think, to do three dashboards. So I'm going to set aside this acetate and vellum and just look at the papers. So the ones from Coco Daisy are double-sided. And then I just go through and decide which sides I want to use and where I want them. So I think I will do this paper. Um, this one just has a coffee stain. I like this one with the writing. So that will be my third dashboard towards the back. And I kind of look at what it will be up against like when you turn. So this paper I think looks good with this paper. So they'll be next to each other if that makes sense. So that's going to be my th third dashboard. Let's look at my second dashboard. I think I want to do either this coffee cup or this kind of animal print. But I do have this card that I want to use. And the other thing to think about is what do you want to see when you first open up your planner? And I think I want to see, do I want to see the coffee cups? That looks really nice with this leather. Or do I want to see the leopard print? And the nice thing is if you put it in and don't like it, obviously you just move it because it's just paper and it's not glued down. I think I'm going to do the animal print with this card on the front and then the coffee cups and the dark brown plaid on the second one. I'm going to set my notebook aside and then I use these as guides. They're all the same size so I'll just grab this first one and use my um, guillotine paper cutter. This is from Amazon. And I will start cutting my papers. So I literally use this as a guide. Cut my first paper down. On this one it is a large print and it looks like I'm gonna lose that anyway um, so that's why I chose to use the back of this but I will try to get this maybe we'll do we'll lose some of the side but not the left side it doesn't really matter because it's going to be the inside of my dashboard All right, so I have my first set done here. That will be the front, that will be the back, and I'm gonna repeat that process for my next set of papers.
All right, now that I have all those cut, I can easily put them in to my dashboards here. On this first one, um, I did wanna put down this four by six card. And to adhere that, I'm going to use a little piece of washi. You could just glue it down if you want it to be more permanent, but since this is going inside that plastic um, dashboard, I won't really worry about it falling off or moving around too much. So this is going to go in the front. And again, if I changed my mind and decided that I really wanted this coffee paper to be up front. Since these aren't glued down or anything, you can just slip it out and rearrange them. And then the back of that dashboard, I'll put this one. So this is what I was talking about. I lost some of the graphics over here, the writing, but that doesn't really matter. And I need to trim this down, it looks like. And then this will be on the back. Then we'll get in my next one, which I had decided I wanted that to be this coffee cup on the outside. And this brown again on the back. And then on my last one is this kind of print and coffee stain paper. So now I have all of my papers changed and you'll notice that I do have some planner tails or planner charms. So I do wanna update some of those. Let me take them out. It's another good accessory if you're looking to spice things up. Again, if you're just getting started, these may not be needed or wanted. I know they drive some people nuts just hanging down and they don't like that. It gets caught in their tote bag or whatever. I really enjoy them. And I'll tell you a few places that I love shopping for those sorts of things. Fur and You makes different charms you can use. This is from Charmed Goods on Etsy and they have these monkey tail knots, what I, which I just absolutely love. And then this one has a little house charm. So I think I'm going to keep this one in. Just put those around the elastics and they hang down at the bottom. And then Two Weeks on Mars makes lots of these charms on wide paper clips. This one has like these coffee colored beads and says, but first coffee, which I thought was perfect for this setup. And so for this one, you can just add this to a piece of paper or to the dashboards and align it where you want it to be showing. So I'm gonna move mine all the way over to the spine so it's kind of um, showing there with the charms hanging down. And so that is how I kind of update or refresh my notebook. So I've really been enjoying or staying with the same inserts and not switching them out much. I can tell you that's a recent development um, I used to switch these out all the time and it's kind of nice to have this contentment where the inserts are working and all I have to do is, you know, find a few pieces of paper to change out and it completely changes the look of my notebook. So there we have the updated notebook. All right, guys, that was my video on getting started with Traveler's Notebooks and how I quickly update 
um, when I'm ready to do that. I hope it was helpful. If I didn't explain something well, especially in the beginning of the video, please let me know and I would be happy to help you or answer any questions that you have. Again, I just adore Traveler's Notebooks for so many reasons and I hope that you consider giving this system a try.